spanning the globe to bring you the constant variety of bowling. The sweet smell of victory. And the agony of smelly feet. The human drama of bowling competition. Another nine count. This is wide world of a sport called bowling. And now, from the Wide World News Desk, comes this bulletin from Columbus, Georgia. News broke out from the state finals for the Pepsi tournament as we were filming this week's Prodigy Bowlers Tour episode. Brunswick's own Roswell's Logan F. qualified for the stepladder finals in the number three position. In the number two spot was Joshua, who recently shot 290 on Prodigy. And in the number one position for the stepladder finals was Prodigy veteran Charlie. In Logan's first match of the stepladder, he beat his opponent by over 100 pins to advance to face Josh in the semifinal. Logan got up in the 10th, needing a double and four to advance to the championship game. He got the first strike, but crossed over in the 11th and left a five pin. So Logan finished third. And in the championship match between Josh and Charlie, it was Charlie who emerged victorious by a final score of 187 to 154. Brandon, who qualified for the finals, did not make the stepladder finals in the U15 boys, and little Rudra, who finished round one in first place among the U8 boys, didn't think he had a chance of advancing to the stepladder after bowling games of 74, 35, and 100. So he and his family left the bowling center. But because the scores were so low for all the bowlers, one of the bowlers in the U8 boys who did qualify for the stepladder also left the bowling center. So Rudra was called in to take the spot in the stepladder as an alternate, but unfortunately had already left the premises. That would have made three out of four Roswell kids in a stepladder. We're proud of all four of our finalists and wish to congratulate Logan for his strong third place showing. Congrats to Josh, not one of our local Brunswick's own Roswell bowlers, but a member of the extended Prodigy family for his runner-up finish. Oh, and remember Bryant, who appeared a couple of weeks ago on Prodigy and took Charlie to the brink in one of our most interesting matches we've had? He finished third in the U-12 boys division at Pepsi. But the biggest of all congratulations goes to Charlie for winning this year's Pepsi tournament in the U-15 boys. That's just awesome. Meanwhile, as Charlie was nailing down his championship at Pepsi, back at Brunswick Zone Roswell, a total of nine kids chose to stay after league to compete in this week's Prodigy Bowlers Tour event, including Kara, who was fourth alternate in the U-20 girls division at Pepsi. She decided not to make the trip to Columbus, opting instead to try to make it back-to-back -back wins on Prodigy Bowlers Tour. How did that work out? Find out now. Live on tape from Brunswick Zone Roswell in Roswell, Georgia, it's Prodigy Bowlers Tour, a series of unofficial, informal, and impromptu after-league challenge matches conducted by some of the most interested and engaged athletes in our youth bowling program, all in an effort to simulate the pressure of tournament competition in an open play environment. The mission of Prodigy Bowlers Tour is to celebrate junior bowling while we elevate junior bowlers. This is April 22nd, 2017, Season 1, Episode 22, Back Home Again. Even with some of our Prodigy regulars off to compete in the state finals of the Pepsi tournament, there were enough interested kids to hold a Prodigy event after league. And so, we decided to stage another single ball elimination contest, with each player throwing one ball per frame and the bowler with the low pinfall each frame being eliminated, until we winnow the field down to just two and hold one head-to-head -head match to decide bragging rights for this week. So, let's meet the nine kids who stayed after league to compete. Bowling first in the order this week is Nolan. 
Nolan is 16 and carries a Roswell Varsity League average of 169. Second in the lineup is Karina. She finished second the last time we held a single ball elimination challenge. Karina is 14 and carries a 151 average. Third up is Danny. Danny is 13 and bowls with Nolan and his brother Mikey in the Roswell Varsity League, where he carries a 165 average. Danny's brother Mikey is the next up in the lineup. He won our last single ball elimination challenge. Mikey began the 2016-17 season with a bang, firing a 299 his very first game of the season. He's 15 and has a 190 league average. Bowling in the fifth position is our first junior varsity player, Jawan. Jawan is 12 and is just in his second full season bowling league. He carries a 108 average, but has begun showing rapid improvement ever since getting his first reactive resin ball in the last few months. Bowling sixth is Christian, or as we like to call him, McFluffy. Christian is a three-time winner on Prodigy and is hoping to finish the season strong in an effort to try to catch Charlie and Logan in the race for the coveted trophy pin. He's 13 and holds a 188 average. Bowling in the seventh spot is Lamar. Lamar is 16 and is looking for his first win on Prodigy Bowlers Tour. He carries a league average of 172. Bowling eighth is Hunter. A winner last week in the Littles division on Prodigy, Hunter is our second of two junior varsity contestants today. Hunter is a four-time winner on Prodigy. He's nine years old and has a 128 league average. And bowling in the anchor spot today is Kara. Kara, also a four-time winner on Prodigy, won last week in our girls division. She was fourth alternate for the Pepsi Finals today and decided not to go. Kara is 16 and her league average is 173. And that's our field today on Prodigy Bowlers Tour. All right, we're bowling on the house shot today. There is a Georgia USBC tournament going on in the house as the kids are bowling and the lane guy is not gonna take the time away and run a sport pattern for us, and that's fine. We'll bowl in the house shot. Format is simple. Everybody throws one ball, low pinfall, that player is out. Nolan gets us started with a nine count. And that might be enough, you never know. All of the players in our field except for three bowled in our last sudden elimination challenge. Jawan, Christian, and Kara were not here that day. But everybody else has been through this drill once before. Here's Karina. A nine count for Karina. She got to the championship match last time and finished second to Mikey. And now here's Mikey's little brother, Danny. The last time we did this, Danny said to me, he's never been so nervous bowling, getting up throw one shot. Right now the number is nine, that's a pretty high bar. I wouldn't want to get less. But there's a strike, so Danny is safe and on to frame two. Mikey will be next to go. Give his ball a good wipe down to get all the excess oil off of it. Ooh! A light shaker. And that's a strike, so Mikey is safe. And now here's Juwan. 
our only left-hander in the field, and one of two junior varsity bowlers. Brooklyn, nine. nine. All right. We'll see if that holds up. Next to go will be Christian. A couple of weeks ago, he won his second Prodigy Bowlers Tour event in a row. And then last week, didn't fare quite so well when we took the show over to Austell. But that's a pretty good ball right there, and that's a strike for Christian, so he is safe and on to frame two. And boy, the bar is pretty high. If you got to get nine just to get into a playoff, well, we'll see. Lamar, who's been off for a few weeks. But he didn't forget how to bowl during that time. There's another nine count. And now we get our first look today at nine-year-old Hunter, who, along with Jawan, he is our other junior varsity bowler. And Hunter is sporting one of our Prodigy Bowlers Tour t-shirts. Oh, he pulled this one. Get a piece of the head pin. It does. But that is eight. There's a sleeper back there. He leaves the three nine. So that puts Hunter on the bubble with eight. And now Kara needs nine to move safely on to frame two. Last time we did this, Hunter was by far the youngest one in the field and he made it to about the third round. Uh-oh! Another eight count. So what that means is we go to a roll-off. They will just keep on going, Hunter and Kara. Everybody else is safe. But Hunter and Kara will go again. It's as if they haven't thrown one yet, and everybody else is safe. Is it going to get up? Uh-oh, not quite. There is a six count for Hunter as he leaves the two, four, five, seven. And now Kara will reset the rack and see if she can beat six. Kara and Hunter both won last week at Austell. She pulls it, but it holds pocket, and Kara gets a strike, and Hunter is our first to be eliminated today. I would not have predicted that. But there you go, Hunter who told me he and his dad had a two o'clock appointment to make today, so at least he's gonna make that two o'clock appointment, but I'm sure he's not happy about making a quick exit from our single ball or sudden elimination challenge, but that's the way it goes. All right, everybody bowled their first frame on lane 39, so now we will move over for frame two and bowl it on lane 40. Now we're down to eight players. Nolan will lead us off. High breaks up the split and gets nine. And I'm sure he's happy with that. That could have been a whole lot worse. Karina, who recently got herself a couple of new bowling balls And I saw her earlier in the day, and they were coming off her hand quite nicely. She could be a force to be reckoned with as she gets used to this new equipment. 
That ball comes up thin and leaves the 2-4-5. And there is our first short count this frame. So Karina in a sticky situation now. Danny will be the next to go. He gives it a big flip at the bottom, but the ball doesn't react quite like he thought it might, but he still gets eight, so he's safe. And that's good enough. And now Mikey, Danny, Mikey, and Nolan are teammates in the Roswell varsity. Right in the pocket, nine and a wiggle. Solid 10 for Mikey and safely on to frame three. Juwan, who's only made a couple of appearances on Prodigy Bowlers Tour, so he's not really used to this kind of pressure. And in this format, every ball is pressure packed. But he can do this. Look out, getting a little roll around here, and nothing else goes. So there's seven for Jawan. So he joins Karina as being on the bubble right now. We'll see how that holds up. That is Jawan's tendency sometimes. He gets his elbow out, and his hand gets around to the side of the ball a little too soon, and he pulls it. But we're working with him on it. Christian, right in the pocket, leaves a soft 10. And although he probably wouldn't love that shot in most match play situations in this circumstance, that's just fine. He is safe. Next to go, clad in all red today, is Lamar. Right on target. Doesn't have quite enough juice to get the five to go, but a nine count is more than enough in this situation. So it's down to Kara. She was not happy when she drew the anchor position. I don't think she likes waiting around to throw the ball. She wants to get up and get it over with and let everybody see if they can match what she did. And that one goes through the nose. It could have been most anything, but she gets nine. So we have a tie once again in the second frame. Karina and Juwan both getting seven. So they will continue in a roll off. If they both throw a ball here and once again tie, we'll just keep going until the tie is broken. Karina doesn't quite get that five pin over into the seven, but that's good enough for nine. So Juwan knows what he needs. And so he will set his feet carefully. Let's see if he can stay behind this one. Oh, he threw it pretty good. Oh, no. Well, that's unlucky as Juwan gets eight going right in the pocket, but the ball deflects. Watch this. Watch the ball deflect to the left. That's because he threw it a little too hard. 
If he softens up the speed a little bit, that ball reads the lane, and he's able to get that thing to drive through and carry out the five pin. But not to be this time. So we move on to frame three, back to lane 39. And there's an eight count for Nolan. Eight is enough? Well, that was the name of a TV show. I'm not sure if it'll be true here, though. Eight has been uh, right on the cusp so far today. Let's see what Karina can do. Gets that thing out into the dry. It will come back some, and she gets eight. So a couple of eight counts so far. And now Danny will uh, reset the rack and see if he can beat eight. Remember last time we did this, Danny was jumping around just trying to stay loose. And that goes through the nose. And that's trouble, that's a seven count. So Nolan and Karina can breathe easy as Danny has undercut their pinfall. And now Danny is the one who's looking for some help. Will he get it from his brother, Mikey? Not this time. That is a nine count, so Mikey's safe. Next to go is Christian. Who has this new ball he just got a few weeks ago. It's a tyrant solid and he loves it also tying his new shoes he loves his new shoes too somebody's phone goes off so Christian backs away for just an instant and he'll reset Take dead aim and go. Pulled it. Oh, but he gets the Brooklyn tripping the six. And I don't know if the phone affected his uh, concentration at all, but it certainly affected his pre-shot routine and his rhythm of getting into the shot. But he gets away with a Brooklyn, and Christian is on to frame four. Now Lamar. <laughs> Lamar has a very simple game. Not many moving parts. Not a lot to go wrong. And he gets that wall shot to go, so Lamar, with a strike, is safely on to frame four. So now it's up to Kara. And that's as solid a strike as you'll ever see. And we have to say goodbye to Danny. His seven count is not going to carry him on to the next frame. So we will move back to lane 40. And the field shrinks by one. Frame four, just six players now. We began with nine. And Nolan will lead us off again. Light. And that is an eight count. There's a sleeper back there, the two eight. 
So Nolan will keep his fingers crossed and hope that eight is enough. Karina setting her feet, picking out a target. And she pulled this one, fell off balance. It goes Brooklyn, and she still gets nine. I have to have her teach me that trick. Well, it's not how, it's how many. And now Mikey will step up on the right lane. Show us what you got, Mikey. He's got a trip four. He's got another X to put up. So Mikey is safe. Nolan still looking on anxiously as Christian gets up on lane 40. And that one drifts a little high, could have left the 4-9, but he trips the 4, leaves only the 9, and that's a 9 count, so Christian is safe. And now Lamar. Gives the reset button a push. Picking out his target down on the lane. And here he goes. It's a little wide, but here it comes, flush. That's a house shot strike right there, but you know what? They count today. So, Nolan down to his last gasp. And Kara puts an end to that with a nine count, and Nolan is our next to make an exit. Eight is not enough this time. So once again, the field is reduced by one. And everybody will move over to the left lane for the next go around. And Kara continues to be the spoiler in that anchor position. Karina asked to go first today. It didn't come up that way in the draw, but now she gets to go first. Comes up light. A little more speed, and she would roll that five over into the seven. That's what we call a swishing seven, where the five doesn't quite get over to take out that corner pin. But a nine count has been enough every time so far. So we'll see. Oh, Ring and 10 for Mikey and another nine count. Pretty tough crowd if nine is the low. Christian taking his time, wiping the oil off that ball, takes a deep breath. He's gotten a lot better about looking down to set his feet correctly. Look at how low his backswing is. Look at how low his pin count is. Five. Uh, he probably could have stood the throw that one a little harder to hold pocket. 
But he jumps at the end, and now that five count has Christian very much in a precarious situation as uh, it's hard to imagine anyone throwing four, but Christian just hollered out to Lamar, throw it in the gutter. Yeah, good luck with that. Lamar throws it pretty straight. I don't see this one going in the gutter. How about right in the pocket? There's a nine count for Lamar and Will Kara spoil the day for Christian? I think Christian knows the outcome. He's already going to get his ball. He knows Kara's not going to get a four count. Ooh, she gets seven. That, you know, you put the seven and eight up for the two, four, five, seven, eight, and well, it didn't work out that way. Kara gets seven, and she is safely on to the next frame. Didn't throw the ball she wanted to throw, but it's enough. So we are down now to our final four players. Karina, Mikey, Lamar, and Kara. This looks suspiciously like the group we had the last time we did this. That ball just ticks the head pin as it's hooking by and somehow she gets nine. She did that before. The last time we did the single ball elimination challenge, I think we called it the sudden elimination challenge, it came down to Mikey and Karina. Lamar finished fourth that time. Kara was not in the field that day. That's going left. He gets a piece of the head pin going away Brooklyn and gets nine as well. So maybe that's the magic spot to hit it, to get nine. I don't think so, but they got away with it. All right, Lamar. I'll tell you what, I'm not sure I'd want to get up and need nine against this crew right here. Nine just to stay alive. Lamar's pretty good at keeping the ball in play, though, with that straight trajectory. He's living proof that straighter is greater. There's another nine count. Well, well, the plot thickens. Will Kara succumb to the pressure? Or will she play spoiler yet again? She's bowling well these days. No doubt about that one. So we have another roll off. This time only one player is safe. Kara is on to frame seven. And this time we will have three people in the roll off. Karina, Mikey, and Lamar. In the pocket, week 10, nine, could be enough, could be enough. I don't know if you heard that, but Kara just said, I don't know why you put me at anchor, I'm having a heart attack every time. Mikey, gotta have nine to be safe. That's pretty safe right there. He said it was a double dribble, but that slapped out the 10 like a perfect shot. So now Lamar is the one who's under the gun. You can see him trying to loosen up his arms. These kids feel the pressure in this situation. 
I love this format because I love putting the kids in pressure situations. It toughens them up for when they're in tournaments. Got to get nine just to stay in it. Oh, not quite the wall shot that he wanted. And Lamar will exit in fourth place with an eight count. That's not what he had in mind, but everybody else breathes a sigh of relief. And we will now move over to lane 39. Now, here's what you need to know about this elimination round. We're down to just three players. So whoever gets eliminated this time will not advance to the championship match. The two players who do move on, one of them will win it. Both of them will bowl a full 10-frame game to decide it. Pins over average handicap. Comes up light. Karina takes a bow. I think she's expecting that to be curtains for her today. We'll see. Last time we had one of these, it was Karina and Mikey in the championship match. Right in the pocket, soft 10. So Mikey just punched his ticket for the championship match. So now Karina will watch anxiously as Kara has Karina's fate in her hand. It's either gonna be Mikey and Kara or Mikey and Karina in the championship match. Kara needs eight to advance. There's nine, that's enough. So Karina finishes third and it's Mikey and Kara, who will bowl in the championship match. Now, bring the spirit of Prodigy Bowlers Tour to your bowling center with Prodigy Bowlers Tour t-shirts and sportswear, including collared shirts with the Prodigy logo printed on the back to show that you support junior bowling. Check out the entire assortment of Prodigy t-shirts in the Brownswick store. Visit ProdigyBowlersTour.com to see the selection. See the Ash Gray Celebrating Junior Bowling Elevating Junior Bowlers t-shirt. Or the Who Will Win the Coveted Trophy Pin t-shirt. Or maybe you'd want the one that says, I've come to get my bowl on, right on the front of the shirt. Or simply, Bowl Me. There's a t-shirt that says, Bowling. You probably don't get it because it's mainly for smart people. And if you're a proud parent with a junior bowler, we've got a t-shirt just for you. And how about this t-shirt? You're bowling an eighth grader. Prepare to meet defeat. Available in grades one through nine, most in both adult and kid sizes. And finally, the shirt that reads, bowl better, have more fun, take lessons. Then maybe you can keep up with me. The Brownswick store is powered by the people at Cafe Press, and all of these shirts are available right now. Just go to ProdigyBowlersTour.com and click on the link to be taken right to the store. PayPal and credit cards accepted. That's ProdigyBowlersTour.com. Get your bowl on and bring the spirit of Prodigy Bowlers Tour to your house. Order now. Go to ProdigyBowlersTour.com. That's ProdigyBowlersTour.com. We began with nine, and we're down to the final two. But before we settle things for the day, let's recap how the single ball elimination brought us to this point. It's never any fun to be the first one to be eliminated, but despite all the success he's had on Prodigy, today it was Hunter's turn to be the first man out. Next to go was Jawan, 
which eliminated the last of our junior varsity players in this field. This is actually a format I would expect our JVs to have a chance to compete, but today it wasn't to be. Finishing seventh in the field was Danny, whose seven count wasn't enough against what has proven to be a pretty strong field. In sixth place was Nolan. Nolan had high hopes coming into this competition after finishing third in our last sudden elimination challenge. Christian was next to go. His five count, the lowest of the day by any of the players, was a bit of a freak occurrence, and it led to him finishing fifth. The next player eliminated was Lamar. He finished fourth, the same spot he finished the last time we did one of these sudden elimination challenges. In third place was Karina. She tried to duplicate her feat of getting all the way into the championship match, just like she did in the last sudden elimination challenge when she came up just short against Mikey in the finale. But Mikey was able to get to the championship match once again. And this time, he's facing Kara. And here we go with the championship match. Now, this is a little different from what we've seen thus far. This is regular match play. Mikey will lead off. They decided that with a toss of the coin. This is handicap. Kara has a league average of 173. Mikey's is 190. That's a 17 pin differential. So Kara gets 17 to start. Mikey starts out with a strike. The last time he was in this situation against Karina, he ran off a string of strikes and ran away from Karina, who he was spotting a whole bunch of pins. Kara throws a solid strike to start as well. So she surrenders none of her handicap right away. And she will move over to the left lane. And there's another powerful strike right in the pocket. And with that double, Kara extends her lead to 27 pins. Mikey's probably going to need some strikes to overtake care of this game. Pretty good ball. Rips the rack. And he answers Kara's double with one of his own. So they're right back where they started. That one did not get out far enough to the right to use the dry portion of the lane. And I think Mikey was just standing a little too far to the left. That ball just stayed in the oil too long. And he has left the 5-7. Move a few boards left, throw it over your strike target. Well, it's a good try, but it hooks just a little too much. And now Kara's lead expands to 31 pins as she steps up on lane 40, working on a double. Breaks just a little bit high, almost tripped the four. Now you'll notice on her score, obviously two strikes and nine, you would have 29 in the first frame. But we've added her 17 pins of handicap into her score so that you'll be able to look right at the score to see where each of the players stands relative to one another with the handicap built in. And there's a spare for Kara. As she moves over to the left lane. This one's left off her hand. Goes through the nose. That could have been a split, but she breaks it up. 
Leaves just the 6-10. Now she will go grab her plastic ball. She is going to be bowling in a qualifier for Teen Masters next week. And they only allow certain balls. One of them that is allowed is this ball right here, which is a T-zone, Brunswick T-zone, plastic ball. You can only use these plastic balls and urethane balls that don't hook much. So she was practicing with that ball and throwing some pretty powerful strikes and getting that plastic ball to hook a little bit. So she's getting ready for that. Ball didn't quite have enough drive to move the five over in toward the seven. Hoping for the wall shot that time, and he got the four and the five to kick out, but the seven stubbornly refused to go. So he will go at the spare. What is this? All right. That's not the way we teach it. Mikey goes slow and taking the scenic route at the seven pin. I certainly didn't teach him that. We recommend going hard and straight at spares, especially single pin spares. He gets that one way out. And it almost made it back. He gets the eight pin to fall and leaves just the two. But Mikey needs strikes to catch Kara. He throws another one of these slow balls. This one, you better look out. That almost hooked by. That is really not recommended. Just go hard and straight at those spares. All right, Kara up on the right. Just tilts out the five. That's like parting the C right there. The ball split the five and six and just had enough on it to tip out the five. But you know what? Looks like 10 in the pit on the scoreboard. This is left. Brooklyn didn't quite get the nine to go. But an easy spare. And as long as Mikey isn't stringing strikes, Kara's really not in much danger. But she needs to cover these spares. Throwing her strike ball at the nine pin. And converts it. All right, let's watch Mikey. Let's see if he looks down at his feet when he steps on the approach. Yeah, he did that time, all right. Sometimes he does, sometimes he doesn't. Oh dear, well. That's disastrous. Not only, well, Mikey actually stepped past the foul line. Look at that. That's over there. And it doesn't matter in the scoring because he threw it in the gutter, but had he knocked any pins down, that would be a foul. And because he stepped over there, we mark it as a foul. And this is a disastrous frame as he loses 10 pins in count on his first ball and then gets six out and it appears that he might have hurt himself on that second shot now on the first ball when he stepped over the foul line it doesn't matter if you step on that walkway over there that's it doesn't matter you can't step past the foul line anywhere the foul line extends around the world for all intents and purposes but Mikey gets a strike in the seventh, and I'd say he needs nothing but strikes the rest of the way to catch Kara. Especially if she's going to do that. Another one that had just enough to get the five to go. But I'll tell you what, Kara's bowled a pretty tidy game here. 
She hasn't had anything that looked like it was even going to present any sort of difficulty as far as closing frames. And there is a steamroller for a double, and now Kara's lead extends to 63. Let's project. Mikey still has 211 possible. Oh, what a bad break. It looked like those two pins, the head pin and the five pin, collided as the five pin was heading over to take out the seven. That is a terrible break at a most inopportune time. He needed to get something going, but now that is going to reduce his possible score by 20. He covers the spare in slow motion, but now the best he can do is 191. Kara has 174 if she throws the next four balls in the gutter. So Mikey is in a bit of trouble and looks like we're waiting on a ball return. So this gives me an opportunity to mention that if you're planning on coming to Prodigy Bowlers Tour to visit us and bowl as a visitor, I'm sorry to say that the rest of the way, all of our dates through May are for Brunswick's own Roswell kids only. Next week, we're planning on having the coaches bowl with the kids during league in a pro-am type format. And we're gonna use the three game score in league as the qualifying number to qualify kids who wanna stay after in bowl prodigy. And then we're gonna do a three person team with a coach, a varsity player, and a junior varsity player and bowl a stepladder format in a Baker type three person team format. If that makes any sense, we think it'll be a lot of fun and a little bit different give you a few new faces to see and let some of our coaches have some fun on the show for a change. But I do not have any intention of having Prodigy take a three month hiatus during the summer. We just don't have our summer schedule nailed down quite yet so I don't have a lot of details but if you go on Facebook and type in Prodigy Bowlers Tour in the search box, it should bring up our group. You're welcome to join it. Of course, you can follow us on Twitter, at Prodigy Bowlers, and uh, keep up with any bulletins we might put out that uh, alert you to upcoming Prodigy Bowlers Tour events. And of course, we'll occasionally put a message up on YouTube through a video. Well, you can hear the announcement being made. There is a Georgia USBC tournament being contested in the house, and he's just getting players alerted to something for their tournament. Mikey puts this one in the pocket, but the 10 pin just refuses to go, and you can see in his body language, he knows he's beat. That will reduce his high possible score to 180. And Kara just needs to keep it on the lane once. And she'll have that beat. We usually see Mikey throw a bunch of strikes, especially on the house shot, but it just wasn't to be today. Kara up in the ninth, working on a double. This will be the shutout ball. That's exactly what it is. So the best Mikey can do is 180. Kara has 174 with a couple of strikes working. So we know who's going to be signing the coveted trophy pin today. It's just a matter of how much can she get. And by the looks of things, she didn't need those 17 pins of handicap. That one crosses over, leaves the five. Another easy spare. Boy, I tell you what, when you can bowl a game, you just pick up a double here and there, but just stay clean the rest of the way. Look what can happen. Now you can subtract 17 pins from her score because that was added on with the handicap, but still, 
with a conversion here. And I can't imagine her missing a five pin. That would put her in the 220s scratch. That's pretty strong. Well, they bowled the single ball format for those first several frames and didn't shoot a spare. And then Kara comes out and doesn't miss a spare. Strong finish, 243 with the handicap. 226 scratch. And Mikey leaves another 10 pin here in the 10th. That's just the kind of day it's been. He goes one handed at it. You don't see Mikey do that very often. And one more ball and we'll call it a day. Well, that's fitting, I guess. Mikey laughing at it, but uh, I'll tell you what, it's just, you know, when it's not your day, it's not your day. It was Kara's day today, and she'll sign the coveted trophy pin when we return. Pros depend on their equipment to make the most of their bowling skill. That's why more professional bowlers use Robbie's gloves. The exclusive designs of Robbie's original automatic positioner, Robbie's Plus, and Robbie's Gladiator guarantee a strong wrist and arm position. The comfortable natural contours of Robbie's gloves improve aiming accuracy, assure a consistent release, and give you more rolling and mixing power. When consistency counts, count on Robbie's. So here are the final results in our second ever single ball elimination challenge. In the end, Kara's decision to not go to Pepsi on this day proved prophetic. The fourth alternate position would not have bowled, and she captured her first back-to-back -back win on the Prodigy Bowlers Tour instead. We're glad she stayed home. And it also appears that she didn't need those 17 pins Mikey was spotting her. She fired a 226 scratch game, which would have been plenty good enough. A program note. Next week, if the Georgia USBC tournament being hosted in our home center doesn't need all the lanes, we'll be able to film a Prodigy episode on April 29th. And if we do, we have a real treat in store, as the plan, as of right now, is to bring our coaches out to bowl with the kids. If things go as planned, we'll have teams of three, one coach, one varsity player, and one junior varsity in a three-man Baker format stepladder. That is, if we have lanes available to bowl on while this tournament is taking over a portion of the house. Keep your fingers crossed. I, by golly, want to get my name on that pin, too. And now, let's join Kara as she gets to sign the coveted trophy pin for the fourth time this season. So it is the ceremonial pin signing, and Kara, once again, our winner after winning last week at Austell. This is, uh, what, four for you now? Four times. So you pass Christian, you join Hunter as a four-time winner. Nice going. 